today I'm going to be reading a story called Seal Skin, Soul Skin. During a time that once was, is now gone forever, and will come back again soon, there is day after day of white sky, white snow, and all the tiny specks in the distance are people or dogs or bear. Here nothing thrives for the asking. The winds blow hard so the people have come to wear their parkas and boots sideways on purpose now. Here words freeze in the open air, and whole sentences must be broken from the speaker's lips and thawed at the fire so people can see what has been said. Here the people live in the white and abundant hair of old Inulek, the old grandmother, the old sorceress who is earth herself. And it was in this land that there lived a man, a man so lonely that over the years, tears had carved great chasms into his cheeks. He tried to smile and be happy. He hunted, he trapped, and he slept well, but he wished for human company. Sometimes out in the shallows in his kayak when a seal came near, he remembered the old stories about how seals were once human, and the only reminder of that time was their eyes, which were capable of portraying those looks, those wise and wild and loving looks. And sometimes then he felt such a pang of loneliness that tears coursed down the well-used cracks in his face. One night he hunted past dark but found nothing. As the moon rose in the sky and the ice flows glistened, he came to a great spotted rock in the sea, and it appeared to his keen eye that upon that old rock there was movement of the most graceful kind. He paddled slow and deep to be closer, and there atop the mighty rock danced a small group of women, naked as the first day they, they lay upon their mother's bellies. Well, he was a lonely man, with no human friends but in memory, and he stayed and watched. The women were like beings made of moon milk, and their skin shimmered with little silver dots, like those on the salmon in springtime, and the woman's feet and hands were long and graceful. So beautiful were they that the man sat stunned in his boat, the water lapping, taking him closer and closer to the rock. He could hear the magnificent women laughing, at least they seemed to laugh, or was it the water laughing at the edge of the rock? The man was confused, for he was so dazzled, but somehow the loneliness that had weighed on his chest like wet hide was lifted away, and almost without thinking, as though he was meant, he jumped up onto the rock and stole one of the seal skins laying there. He hid behind an outcropping and he pushed the seal skin into his parka. Soon one of the women called in a voice that was the most beautiful he'd ever heard, like the whales calling at dawn, or no, maybe it was more like the newborn wolves tumbling down in the spring, or but, well, no, it was something better than that, but it did not matter, because what were the women doing now? Why, they were putting on their seal skins, and one by one the seal women were slipping into the sea, yelping and crying happily, except for one. The tallest of them searched high and searched low for her seal skin, but it was nowhere to be found. The man felt emboldened. By what, he did not know. He stepped from the rock, appealing to her, woman, be my wife. I am a lonely man. Oh, I cannot be wife, she said, for I am of the other, the ones who live beneath. Be my wife, insisted the man. In seven summers, I will return your seal skin to you, and you may stay or you may go as you wish. The young seal woman looked long into his face, with eyes that but for her true origin seemed human. Reluctantly, she said, I will go with you. After seven summers, it shall be decided. So in time they had a child, whom they named Oric, and the child was, was lithe and fat. In winter, the mother told Oric tales of the creatures that lived beneath the sea, while the father whittled a bear in white stone with his long knife. When his mother carried the child Oric to bed, she pointed out through the smoke holes in the clouds and all their shapes, except instead of recounting the shapes of raven and bear and wolf, she recounted the stories of walrus, whale, seal, and salmon, for those were the creatures she knew. But as time went on, her flesh began to dry out. First it flaked, then it cracked. The skin of her eyelids began to peel. The hairs of her head began to drop to the ground. She became palest white. Her plumpness began to wither. She tried to conceal her length. Each day her eyes, without her willing it so, became more dull. She began to put out her hand in order to find her way, for the sight was darkening, for her sight was darkening. 
And so it went until one night when the child Oric was awakened by shouting and sat upright in his sleeping skins. He heard a roar like a bear that was his father berating his mother. He heard a crying like silver wrung on stone that was his mother. You hid my seal skin seven long years ago, and now the eighth winter comes. I want what I am made of returned to me, cried the seal woman. And you, woman, would leave me if I gave it to you, boomed the husband. I do not know what I would do. I only know I must have what I belong to. And you would leave me wifeless and the boy motherless. You are bad. And with that, her husband tore the hide flap of the door aside and disappeared into the night. The boy loved his mother so his loved his mother much. He feared losing her and so cried himself to sleep, only to be awakened by the wind. A strange wind. It seemed to call him Oric, Oric. And out of bed he climbed so hastily that he put his parka on upside down and pulled his mukluks only halfway up. Hearing his name called over and over, he dashed out into the starry, starry sky. Starry, starry night. Oruk! The child ran out to the cliff overlooking the water, and there, far out in the windy sea, was a huge, shaggy, silver seal. Its head was enormous, its whiskers drooped to its chest, its eyes were deep yellow. Oruk! The boy scrambled down the cliff and stumbled at the bottom over a stone, no, a bundle, that had rolled out of a cleft in the rock. The boy's hair lashed at his face like a thousand rains of ice. Oruk! The boy scratched open the bundle and shook it out. It was his mother's sealskin. Oh, and he could smell her all through it. And as he hugged the sealskin to his face and inhaled her scent, her soul slammed through him like a sudden summer wind. Oh, and he cried with pain and joy and lifted the skin again to his face, and again her soul passed through his. Oh, he cried again, for he was being filled with the unending love of his mother, and the old silver seal way out, sank slowly beneath the water. The boy climbed the cliff and ran toward home with the sealskin flying behind him, and into the house he fell. His mother swept him and the skin up and closed her eyes in gratitude for, for the safety of both. She pulled on her sealskin. Oh, mother, no, cried the child. She scooped up the child, tucked him under her arms, and half ran and half stumbled toward the roaring sea. Oh, mother, don't leave me, or cried. And at once you could tell she wanted to stay with her child. She wanted to, but something called her, something older than she, older than he, older than time. Oh, mother, no, cried the child. She turned to him with a look of dreadful love in her eyes. She took the boy's face in her hands and breathed her sweet breath into his lungs once, twice, three times. Then with him under her arms like a precious bundle, she dove into the sea, down and down and down, and still deeper down, and the seal woman and her child breathed easily underwater, and they swam deep and strong till they entered the underwater cove of seals, where all manner of creature were dining and singing, dancing and speaking, and the great silver seal that had called to Oric from the night sea embraced the child and called him grandson. How fair are you up there, daughter? asked the great silver seal. The seal woman looked away and said, I heard a human, a man who gave his all to me, but I cannot return to him, for I shall be a prisoner if I do. And the boy asked the old seal, my grandchild? He said it so proudly his voice shook. He must go back, father, he cannot stay. His time is not yet to be here with us. And she wept, and they wept, and together they wept. And so some days and nights passed, seven to be exact, during which the time the luster came back to the seal woman's hair and eyes. She turned a beautiful dark color, her sight was restored, her body regained its plumpness, and she swam uncrippled. Yet it came time to return the boy to land. On the night the old grandfather seal and the boy's beautiful mother swam with the child between them. Back they went, back up and up and up to the topside world, where they gently placed Oric on a stony shore in the moonlight. His mother assured him, I am always with you. Only touch what I have touched, my fire sticks, my ulu knife, my stone carvings of otters and seals, and I will breathe into your lungs a wind for singing of your songs, for the singing of your songs. The old silver seal and his daughter kissed the child many times. At last they tore themselves away and swam out to sea. And with one last look at the boy, they disappeared beneath the waters, and Oric, because it was not his time, stayed. As time went on, he grew to be a mighty drummer and singer and a maker of stories, and it was said this all came to be true because as a child, 
he had survived being carried out to sea by the great seal spirits. Now in the gray mists of morning, sometimes he can still be seen. With his kayak tethered, kneeling upon a certain rock in the sea, seeming to speak to a certain female seal, who often comes near the shore. Though many have tried to hunt her, time after time they have failed. She is known as the Bright One, the Holy One, and it is said that, though she be a seal, her eyes are capable of portraying those human looks, those wise and wild and loving looks. <laughs>